season. Traffic has definitely picked up. Anybody? Uh, I don't know about you, but I have to do a lot more praying in my car now. <laughs> and then all of the stores, they seem to be getting filled, especially Costco and Sam's, right? So I, I, I had to go to Sam's, and I had about 20 minutes to go in and out of Sam's. That in itself was absolutely stupid, but I thought I could do this. So I'm in Sam's, and um, I'm going down the aisle way, and in front of me was this couple. And I don't know why they did this. But, and I don't know why people do this, period. But I I'm, I'm have my car, and they're in front of me, and they stop in the middle of the aisleway. And she starts looking at something and starts talking to her husband. Oh, hon, look at these Christmas decorations. Oh, they're just gorgeous. Hon, we don't need Christmas decorations. Oh, you're just such a scrooge. And I'm going, move. <laughs> I have to get somewhere. Come on. They just, and, you're, and, you're, and you're, you're just standing there, okay, just enjoy, yeah, this is great, I've got 20 minutes, right, and you can't get around them because there's people coming this way too, come on, you've been there, this is not the time to look at things, go, come on, on delay, so, I'm so excited about our, our Hispanic community that you're here with us, and you can actually hear this in your language, we've been praying for you, and we're so excited about that, um, those funds that came in, just to let you know, uh, those Hispanics who cannot understand English, they actually have these translation equipment. They're actually, there's somebody in our offices that's taking what I'm saying and translating it into their language so they could hear it in their language and bless those people who are translating because they always tell me to slow down. So pray for them in Jesus' name. So, but we're so grateful. Yeah, yes, thank you, slow down. I get it. I'm, we're getting there. Okay, so here I'm in, I'm in Sam's, and I have all the stuff on the belt, and there's a line behind me. And all of a sudden, I realize I'm in Sam's, and they only take Discover, and they only take American Express, or no, they take Dis only Discover, and I have an American Express and a Visa, and so now, you know, I said, oh, no, Discover. And I think the checkout lady, lady saw my face, and she said, oh, no, we take the Visa debit cards as well. I said, oh, yeah, that's great. So I opened up my wallet, and then all of a sudden, I realized that I have a new debit card from a new bank, and I don't know the PIN number. So now, the attitude that I had with the person in front of me was, and now the people in back of me were giving me an attitude. Come on, lady. Yes, like, what's wrong with you? Don't you even know your pen number, right? So the, my point is this. I had all of the resources available, but I couldn't access them because I didn't know my pen number. And it's how it is when it comes to the things of God. God has all of these resources available for us, but we have to access them. How do you access them? How do you even access the freedom we've been talking about? It goes back to that key scripture that's been a part of this series. It's in John 8, 32. When it, what does it say? It says, and you will know the what? And you will know what? You will know the truth, and the truth will what? Truth makes you free. And it's interesting, that word know got my attention this week as I was thinking about that scripture again. And you will know the truth. That word know, it's not like, for example, I know President Obama. Not that I know him personally, but I know of him. Correct? I've never had coffee with him. And I've never told him uh, my, my issues. Right? I know him only by what I've seen on TV or in ads. Right? But I know my husband James. That word know means continued experience with. Continued experience with. So we, we would look at that scripture this way. The truth, the word of God that you have continued experience with will set you free. It will make your life free. We've been talking about in this series how we cannot be ignorant of Satan's devices. He has devices set up against us so that we don't encounter the freedom, the resources that God has made available for us. So today I want to talk about three things. Three things that the enemy is afraid of regarding you. Three things. And there are three things that you and I need to keep before us. I mean, put it on our refrigerator. Keep it before us constantly because freedom is a process. It's not an overnight deal. 
there, you'll recognize as, as you continue to walk with God that you'll go seasons where you'll recognize, oh, I didn't realize that that, that still had me. So freedom is a process, and we're, we're walking in that freedom day by day. So let's turn over to Mark chapter 4. We're going to unpack a familiar story uh, in the Word, and it's about when Jesus actually calmed a storm. But prior to this event, if you read the previous chapters, we see that Jesus is doing incredible miracles, raising the dead, healing the sick, and his message is one of extreme compassion. And people are hearing his message and seeing these miracles. And what is it doing? It's instilling a hope that things can be different. Yes, I can experience freedom. My life doesn't have to be the same. I can have a life of purpose. And the crowds are just growing as a result. So Jesus finishes speaking. And remember, he, he has his disciples that are following him. And they're hearing those messages too. And hope is springing in their hearts that things can be different. And some of you, you've been in that environment where you heard a message and you realized that God had something more for you. That there were answers for you. And that hope began to elevate on the inside of you. So in this environment, Jesus finishes preaching. And then he says, okay, guys. Let's go over to the other side. So let's read. It says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Let us go over to the other side. First of all, that let us really got my attention this week. When I was growing up, I, I grew up in a very religious church. And I don't know about you, but what God was presented to me was that he was very, very far away. You didn't know if he was happy with you, if he liked you. I didn't know if a hammer was going to come down at, on me at any moment. I was not presented the truth about my heavenly father. So I thought that God was far away. But what we see in the scriptures about Jesus, he's always about let us. Come on, I want to do this with you. I want to do life with you, not apart from you. So he says, let us go to the other side. And they're like, okay, sure, we're going to go to the other side. What does the other side represent for you and I? For you and I, it represents our answer. It represents for some of us maybe that breakthrough of that bondage that's held us. Maybe it's a breakthrough in our finances. Maybe it's a breakthrough in our physical body. Let us go to the other side. Hear that message about God that he's good. Yes, let's go. You've been there, right? That hope rises up. Then the next part of that verse says, leaving the crowd behind. To go to the other side, sometimes we have to leave some things behind. Sometimes we have to leave behind what I call idols, things that seem to take precedence over God. It could be things. It could be relationships. It could even be ourselves. Sometimes we have to leave behind unforgiveness or bitterness some old relationships. Come on, let's go the other side. But we may have to leave some things behind. So what happens from here? They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. So think of a boat. It's all crazy all over the place. Water spilling in on the boat. The Bible says Jesus is sleeping on a cushion. In the middle of this crazy storm, he was fully persuaded, I said we're going to the other side so I can rest. But his disciples, hmm, different story. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And I think we say that a lot when we start to go to that other side. We begin to believe, yes, I can have my breakthrough. Yes, it can be different. Yes, I can have purpose. We start to go, and then storm rises up. Something rises up to negate what God said to us, or that hope that rose in our heart, a furious storm. Maybe it's a bad report. Whatever it is, that hope that was in our hearts that things could be different, all of a sudden is in question because storms are rising. Anybody been there just once? And what do we do? Wait a second. I thought you said, I wish above all things that I would prosper. It's not happening. Don't you care? 
Wait, didn't you say that by your stripes it could be healed? Why am I still sick? Don't you care? Come on. We've been there. And so we say, don't you care? And really then from, from don't you care, it goes into maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I am disqualified. Here we go again. I'm not picked again. Anybody been there where, like, there's teams being, being picked? Yeah, I see. And you're, like, the last one picked. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people, right? Here we go again. When we were, uh, my, my husband and I, when we were first married, we used to have all the young adults to our house, and we'd play volleyball together, and it was a blast. And um, I would tell my husband, because he was always a captain, uh, my husband, Pastor James, he is an incredible volleyball player. You definitely want to be on his side because you do not want to be in front of him when he starts to hit that ball over that net. <laughs> no. So, and I'm very smart. I have to be on his team because I have to win because I like to win. <laughs> so, and not that I contribute, but anyways. So, before they would come over, I'd say, now, hon, we're going to be picking teams. And I just want you to know, I know that you are going to pick me first. <laughs> and then I would say, and if you don't, it's going to be a very cold, cold night. <laughs> and don't look at me like you've never done that. <laughs> and of course, being the very smart man that he is, he always picked me first. <laughs> I had to win. And we, every team he was on, I mean, he always won. He's just, he's very competitive and he he will win. So I didn't want that ball going in my face. I wanted it in someone else's. So that my point is this. We all come to that place where we things are not moving along as we thought. It doesn't seem like we're getting to the other side. It doesn't seem like freedom is available for us because this squall has risen up. Oh, don't you care? Don't you care? And this is what happens, the disqualification, the devalue. And even when I was praying about this, some of you have been going through some things. There have been some wrong choices. There have been some business decisions that have happened that have not gone the way they need to go. And it's produced this devalue, this I'm a failure. You're not. It's an opportunity for your next level. And in that arena, it's don't you care? I must not be good enough. It's not going to happen for me. And this is what the enemy is afraid of, okay? He's afraid of you and I truly believing in our righteousness. When you believe in your righteousness, no matter what is going on around you, you know that you know that you know God has my back. He loves me. He accepts me. This doesn't make sense, but I'm his, I'm his child, and he will see me through. But when you don't have that secure inside of you, when a storm rises, when things happen in your life, the first thing that we do is hide. He must not care. And that's exactly what the enemy wants, for us to question and not believe. We are accepted. We are loved. We are righteous. The scripture is so clear. It says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, He, that's God, or Jesus, who knew no sin, the Bible says, He what? Became sin. When did he become sin? When he was on that cross, the Father put the, the sins of humanity all on Jesus. Why? So that you and I, the scripture says, could become the righteousness of God. It's not an outward thing. It's an internal creation on the inside. You see, you are a spirit. You possess a soul, you live in a physical body. So what God does when we receive Christ, a miracle on the inside happens. God's very spirit, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus comes and recreates your spirit. And we are made a child of God, in right standing with God. Nothing can change that. You don't get to righteousness by your behavior. You get to righteousness by receiving. By receiving. And when we get a hold of this, no matter what the storm is, we stand tall and say, no, God's got my back. God's got my back. This doesn't make any sense. But he said, let's go. And we're going, God. We're going, God. Amen? All right. And our senses say different. So now when these thoughts are raging, when these obstacles rise, these storms come, what did Jesus do? Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 39. He got up, he rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet. Now, that's an exclamation mark, so it wasn't just quiet. 
It was quiet. Be still. The wind died down, and it was completely calm. I believe that Jesus, my mother always told this to me. In fact, she'll be here a week from tomorrow. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. So we'll see her, not next Sunday, the following Sunday. So um, I believe that Jesus likes to kill several birds with one stone. And if you're a bird lover, I'm sorry. Um, he was using the storm as an opportunity to show them some things about life. Okay? We don't live in a bed of roses. There's trials. There's situations. We have an enemy that's opposing us in this world. And Jesus was showing them, listen, I've given you some promise. I said, let's go. I am with you. But guess what? There are going to be storms that rise up in your life. And instead of you saying, oh, don't you care, I need you to stand up and speak to them as I'm doing it. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in the earth. He knew he was going to be leaving them. He was showing them, this is how you live in this world right now. You need to speak to your storms. And you may be saying, yeah, but he was the son of God. He was God. Mm, that's right. But Jesus said something, at, something else. In Mark chapter 4, verse 11, or Mark chapter 11, verses 23 through 24, the, the scripture says, Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart. Doesn't, I think in my verse it says, says to this mountain, right? Says to this mountain, says to the storm, says to the bondage, says to the temptation, says to the squirrely thought. Whoever would say to this mountain, be removed or go throw yourself into the sea. I'm quoting New King James Version. And does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen. It will be done for them. This is Jesus saying this. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. And it will be yours. There's have received, it will. So before it actually changes, before you see the storm subside, before you even see your breakthrough, he's saying, I need you to believe that it is before you see it. Based on what he said based on what he promised. There's a saying that comes out of a believing before you actually see it. But the senses, oh, they deceive us. Looks like it's not happening. Looks like it's not happening. And God is saying, believe before you see. Which takes me to my next point here. Believing in our authority in the word of God. The enemy is so afraid that you and I will tap into this, believing in the authority of the word of God. See, God designed this incredible plan that no matter where we are in our station of life, whatever pedigree, whatever background, no matter where we are, he has designed that if you and I would begin to believe what he says about us and what we can have, that if you and I would Find that out and believe that change would come to our lives. He made the resources available. We have to access those resources by believing that word. And when we believe in the power of that word, change begins to happen. I love how Joel Osteen, he starts his, his messages out with, I believe I can have what the Bible says. I believe I can do what the Bible says that I can do. What is he doing? He's getting us back to our created design. That everything we have need of is in the pages of that word, and it needs to be accessed. There are families in this church, many families in this church, that when they came to Life Christian Church, their marriages were struggling. Their finances were struggling. They were barely getting by. Their children were driving them crazy. Didn't know what to do. And they began to hear the truth about what God says about them. And they're like, God cares about your family. He cares about your finances. He cares about every single hair on your head. They began to get into the word and see that God cared and made provision. And they began to believe it. And over a period of time, we saw these families, literally, their marriages get strong. Their finances change. Their bodies become strong. It wasn't overnight because you didn't get where you are overnight. Hello. But there was this process. And I, I personally feel the church really was growing because 
people were beginning to experience transformation, they, and they began to tell people. He's a miracle God. He came to give us life and a life more abundant, not barely get by. And the truth that you know, that you experience. So as these families began to what? Experience the word, apply the word, hear the word, do the word, apply it, experience the word. They got set free. They got to the other side. They got to the other side. And I'm telling you, storms rose up in their lives as well. But they stood. God loves me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He's not left me. So what? There's a storm. He's in there with me. Let us. Let us. Jesus is in the storm with you. He's in the, even in the bondage with you ready to get you to be set free. Let us go to the other side, leaving in our authority of the world. And th these, what I love, I, I got to talk about the Greeless family. I love it when they began to really uh, lay hold of some of this stuff. She used to show me, she would literally write promises from the word of God about uh, the, her family, about their finances. She just would write promises and she'd show these promises to me and she would in the morning get up in her quiet time and declare these promises over her family. Why? Because the word is very powerful, but coming out of your mouth, it's even more powerful. Because words frame our world. Words do. Now, science has proven this time and time again, and I'm not going to go into all the scientific facts about it. In another series, we'll do so. But our words frame our world. Really, we are a product of the things that we've said. We really are. And I believe that some of the storms in our life came right from our mouth. We said some things in haste, and they produced in our lives. Come on, we say things like, man, I've just been running around like a chicken with its head cut off. I'm just so stressed. Come on. And then all of a sudden, you're stressed. I'm just so sick and tired. I'm just so sick and tired. And so they're sick and tired. Oh, I'm just worried to death. Come on. Oh, you're killing me. Oh, you're just killing me. <laughs> Come on, we say that, don't we? Yeah, you're all laughing. Yeah, I said that. I'm a pain in my neck. I'm going to kick you from here to Timbuktu. <laughs> Let's think about this. After everything we say, what would happen if we backed it with this every single time? And that's exactly the way I want it. I'm worried to death, and that's exactly the way that I want it. Oh, I'm never going to get that promotion, and that's exactly the way that I want it. Oh, you're killing me, and that's exactly the way that I want it. I'm just so worried, and that's exactly the way that I want it. I just can't get enough sleep, and that's exactly the way that I want it. My kid's never going to change, and that's exactly the way that I want it. Changes the, the score of the game, doesn't it? Our words frame our world. Now watch this. The words that come out of our mouth, they're shaped right here. Right here. Scripture says, as a man thinks, so he is. So we think it, and then it comes out of our mouths. And then things start to happen in our lives. Right? So I want to show you what, uh, I've, got, I've got to speed this thing up right here. Um, a couple of things here. Look over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. I'm going to show you some things that are going to change your life today. It says in the scriptures, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. There's a war going on. I didn't know that there was a war going on. Yeah, there's a war going on. And the scripture says we don't, have to, we don't wage in this war the way the world wages in the war. Just give me a minute. Matt, just give me a minute. I just love, don't you appreciate Matt? Isn't he wonderful? I just love him. Okay. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. So in that verse alone, we see that we have weapons. They're not of this world. And it says, on the contrary, oh no, they're not weak. They're strong weapons. They have divine power. That means that God's touches on them. They're mighty. They're strong to demolish strongholds. Demolish means to, to pull down, to destroy, demolish strongholds, fortresses. Now, where are those strongholds? We demolish, we pull down arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So arguments, that, that word in the original language, it literally means thought reasoning, thought reasoning, 
that is opposed, that's contrary, that's hostile to the Word of God, hostile to the Christian faith. So there's thoughts that are going in our brain that are hostile, that are opposed to what God's Word says about you. It's a war because it says that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So you hear Oh, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. That's 3 John 2. But then this opposing thought comes in and says, no, nothing's changed yet. Do you see that? It goes back and forth. It goes back and forth. I can't do that. No, 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 no. That's not what God's word says. God's word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's this opposing thought thought process, a war that's raging right here. And then the, the answer comes. It says right here, and we take captive every thought. We take captive. Notice it doesn't say that your brother, that your sister. It says we take captive every thought and bring it into the obedience of Jesus Christ. So when that thought rises up that says you're not going to experience freedom, you need to say, oh, no, no, Mr. Devil, I'm going to the other side because he said so. So when that thought rises up, no, you're never going to be well. Oh, no, Mr. Devil, I will be well because by your stripes I'm healed. Do you see there's a war that's raging. You have the resources to fight. It's the word of God. But if you don't know it, if you don't speak it, it just sweeps over your life. It just sweeps over your life. My daughter Alexa, uh, when she was in, in her two and two and three years old, she was extremely shy. I, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but she'd wrap herself around my leg, and I'd be like, "Okay, Alexa, let go, Alexa." You know, I have to drag her. She was like a barnacle all over me, extremely shy. Yes, and you're laughing because she's not like that today, right? Not even close. So one promise, just one promise. I said, Alexa, there's a promise in Proverbs 28. It says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I said, you can be bold as a lion. You don't have to be shy. That little girl, she began to say that scripture with me. Let us go to the other side. We did it together. Come on. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Alexa, you're bold as a lion. Let me tell you, it wasn't, it wasn't overnight. For those of you who know Alexa, that girl is not shy. She is so bold. She'll stand up in her class and defend the gospel. One promise. Take that thought captive. I am what God says that I am. I'm going to the other side. My brother, he struggled in school. He believed a lie that he was not smart. I'm dumb. I'm not like the other kids. Man, that was me. I felt that at one time. How about you? My mom said to him, take it captive, my brother, or my son, take it captive. And there's a promise. I've got those in your notes as well. It says that the hidden wisdom of God has been made available to you. We have the mind of Christ. He began to take those thoughts captive and speak it, bring it into the obedience of Christ and speak what God says about him. He went from C, C and D's to A and B's. Enemy is afraid. He's afraid will know the authority that's in the word of God that will know our righteousness the last thing he's afraid of let's read in Mark let's finish off in Mark chapter 4 or uh, uh, where am I Mark 4 I think it's verse uh, 40 he said to his disciples why are you so afraid do you still have no faith they were terrified and they asked each other who is this even the wind and the waves obey him why were they afraid why do we get afraid? Maybe he's not there. I'm facing this alone. But Jesus made a promise. And it's something that you and I have to believe in. If you look at John 14, 16 through 18, it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. A helper to be with you forever. Let us go to the other side. Let's go to freedom. I'm going to help you. Even when those storms rise, I'm here to help. Don't question me. Don't say I don't care. I care. I'm going to give you a helper. To be with you forever, even the spirit of truth. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. 
whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you. He'll be in you. I'll not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You're not alone. You have nothing to fear. Come on, we're going to the other side. Freedom. Deliverance. What God's made available for us. The next scripture is Acts 1.8. Jesus said this just before he descended. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That word power, it's dunamis. You know what it means? Miraculous power. Those of you who have been here, is that super on your natural? You don't have to do this by yourself. There's some super available for your natural. But you will receive power. Power to make it through the storm. Power to receive that deliverance. Power to get to the other side. Let us go to the other side. We have to leave some things behind. Maybe some wrong thinking, some wrong teachings. We've got to leave it behind. Put that cross before us. There's a song that we used to sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me what? the cross before me the world behind me the cross before no turning back, no turning back. Let's pray. Every eye closed, every head bowed. God is giving you an invitation this morning. He's saying, let us go to the other side. Got to leave some things behind. And today, I want to offer you one of the greatest gifts Bible says that if we would yield our hearts to him, invite Jesus to come into our hearts, that's really how we leave the world behind and how we press forward to him. He's a gentleman. He does not in any way push himself on us. He invites us. He's saying to some of you, let us go to the other side. Let us go together into salvation, into a life that's new. And for some of you, you may have never, ever asked Jesus to come into your heart. You've never surrendered your life to Jesus. This is your opportunity. And it's very simple. It's a simple prayer. We're going to pray it together. I'm not going to ask you to come forward and do anything like that. What I will ask you to do is this. If you want to be included in that prayer, you want to receive Christ. You want to go to your other side. If that's you this morning and you want to receive Christ, with every head bowed, every eye closed, just slip your hand in the, in the ear, and that lets me know that you want to be included in this prayer. I want to receive Jesus. See that hand. See that hand. See that hand. I see that hand. Oh, I praise you, Father. I see that hand. Oh, bless the Lord. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, right now, I ask you, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I surrender my life completely to you. Help me to live my life reflecting you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's just take a moment and just thank the Lord. Right now there's a party happening in heaven for those who have yielded their hearts to Jesus. Father, I just thank you for the tremendous work that you are doing in all of your people right now. Right now, oh, we just give you praise. We just give you praise. Oh, I give you praise. I magnify you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. Father, I thank you that right now you're doing such a work in all of our lives. Father, we talked about your goodness. We talked about that you're a miracle-working God, that you're a healer. You are a deliverer. 
You care about everything in our lives. So I thank you and I praise you, Father God, that in this place you are doing a new and a fresh work. I thank you for breakthroughs in physical bodies. I thank you for breakthrough in finances. I thank you for healing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. Come on, all you need to do is say, Jesus, I just receive your love. I receive your touch. Come on, if you're if you're struggling in your body, you're struggling in your finances, you need a breakthrough. Just say, Lord, I receive of you. I receive of you. Oh, Jesus, you're so awesome. You are so good. We give you praise. This morning when I was praying, I saw that there was a, a person who's been struggling with some kind of a rash. If you can just believe right now, Jesus wants to touch you. It's a rash of some sort. And then I saw that someone's been struggling with pain in their right ear, acute pain in their right ear. Just reach out and say, Jesus, I just receive of you. You love me. I'm going to the other side. I'm going to the other side. You're with me. You're with me. You're touching me. Come on, let's just give him praise. Father, we worship you. We worship you. You are so good. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. Oh, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. God is so good. Listen, folks, we don't have to settle for mediocrity. We don't have to settle for mundane. We can truly have the life that he promised we can have. The scripture says, I've come to give you life and life more abundant. Is it just for you just to have a good life? It's for also us to give it away. That we'd be generous of what it is that he's given us. He's an awesome God. Now, for those of you who you receive Christ for the very first time, in that connection card, there's a spot where you can actually mark, I've received Christ for the first time. Maybe some of you, you, you've recommitted your life. What I need you to do is take out that connection card and mark it. And this is what we will do for you. We want to get some resources to you. We'll mail them to you. It's just direction how you can, uh, again, grow in what's happened into your, in your heart. And for those of you who maybe you've never heard about speaking the word, I want to offer you that in our bookstore, there's a little booklet called God's Creative Power. It really shows you how to speak God's word over your finances, over your physical body, for wisdom. If you're struggling with depression, it shows you how to do that. And for some of you who don't know the Holy Spirit, again, we said that the enemy is afraid of us knowing the power of the Holy Spirit. I call it the stealth missile of my life. There's a book in the bookstore called The God I Never Knew. It's about the Holy Spirit. I recommend every person to read it. It's the best book I've ever read on the Holy Spirit. Why are you laughing? Grab it. If you don't know about the Holy Spirit, you're missing out. He's your friend. He's your advocate. He's your peace. He's the power that's available for you to get to the other side. So grab that book. Amen? Now, giving is just as easy as sending a text. This is a fun, simple, and secure way to give. To try it out, open a new text and simply send the amount you want to give to your church's giving number. If this is your first time, you'll be asked to complete a one-time form, safely linking your card to your smartphone. This new way of giving does not go on your phone bill, and you can always refund a gift in case of a mistake. After that, you're done. You'll receive a text back confirming your gift. From here on out, you'll be able to give it any time from anywhere with a single text.